finally, I have uh, created my uh, virtual private gateways. Those virtual private gateways actually provides like IPsec uh, services, and then I attach those things to my VPC. And uh, lastly, it comes to the VPN connections. I created two VPN connections, one for one office and another for another office. And that created two tunnels, and uh, the, those tunnels are uh, are uh, configured at the, at the other end of Cisco ASA 5505. And that gave me to connect to both the, both the VPN connections. But uh, uh, at a given time, because of the traffic and routing, uh, my routing does only one one tunnel uh, force traffic to the one tunnel. So if one tunnel is like uh, overwhelmed or is, is not functioning, then the other tunnel can can be activated. So if there is no meaningful uh, traffic from the from the VPN side to the to the AWS connection, then I found like tunnels are both tunnels doesn't come up it, in this case like only one tunnel, tunnel can be up and other, other tunnel can be standby. So on each and every uh, VPC con uh, connections I have also this uh, IP addresses like where which IP prefixes it will be static route to that that particular connections like I have like one one for one office and another for the another office so there are two subnetting in the uh, in first VPN connections and then one connection one one uh, submit for the other VPN connections. So once you have the connection, you can download download the configuration. I have downloaded configuration for Cisco ASA 550 series and ASA 8.0 0 8.2 plus. And then once I have downloaded that configuration, that configuration I can use my customer gateway configuration. So now I'll be demonstrating my customer gateway configuration. So downloaded file shows like what it is showing in here. Like it, it, it gives you like the crypto, um, crypto, crypto graphic, like internet key exchange configuration. It gives you, uh, gives you like uh, crypto policy and then group and then lifetime and encryption uh, like which is AES or triple dash and the authentication with this pre share or not, uh, and then hash, hash technology. Uh, that, that those are the, the main thing on that particular downloaded configuration. It also needs to provide like outside interface. Then it, it provides also like tunnel group, like tunnel group with uh, um, IPsec and then attributes, pre share key, and then keep alive for, for number of retry. That's the tunnel group configuration. It has also access list configuration that like access list configuration requires uh, how you want to provide like a, a outside IP addresses to come inside or how like local outside network can come to inside network. The permission of those things are very important. And finally, uh, on the IPsec configuration, you have to provide like IPsec configuration in terms of like address matching, then P P PFS group. Uh, please remember PFS group is two. Most cases, common Cisco configuration will use PSF uh, configuration one, and then PR set that you need to set it up, and then set, setup is needed on the interface outside on the IPC configuration. And the VPN filter, you have to provide some filter. A filter actually makes it easy to to mark the uh, to provide uh, uh, traffic from local LAN to the internet, and that that filter uh, filter works on that that aspect. Even after uh, downloading the configuration and changing the interfaces and the, and the uh, policies and everything, you may still find like this, this uh, uh, auto downloaded configuration may not be a right thing for you. You may destroy your existing configuration. I found like side to side VPN connection profile uh, is not visible after, after running that configuration. Even meaningful traffic may not actually send from AWS VPC connections and uh, it, it become very difficult to establish and uh, inf interface may not work and the transform set may go wrong and encrypted packet may not be decrypted and uh, uh, um, um, uh, like Cisco ASA 5505 may not run both both connections at a single time and the 
and the routed traffic become TTL expire in case if you use like by default uh, a subnet that comes up when you create the subnet and uh, if you have any of those subnet in your network then you will find the problem of the TTL and the by default subnet is uh, like uh, stroke 16 which is quite a large number of IP addresses so you may have like similar sort of network inside your network so uh, one must be very careful on like how we define our subnet at the router uh, same traffic can be routed to a single AWS VPN uh, connection and another one will be going off SLA monitor if you start it up from the from the script it may generate too much traffic and and a small uh, ASA 5505 sometimes it finds a too much traffic load and sometimes it doesn't behave like usually it should behave and many other problems of running this script so I recommend you can actually run directly like IPsec side-to-side -side VPN in the Cisco so Cisco SDM comes with like ASDM uh, ASA 5505 or any other firewall comes with the ASDM uh, ASDM uh, Java based application which you can use so I'm just launching a uh, ASDM uh, 6.2 so 6.2 for ASA uh, application which you can use for configuring your side to side VPN tunnel so you can uh, go from from the uh, from the menu and you can select IPsec side to side uh, VPN wizard you select the IPsec side to side and then Tunnel interface is outside. This is the one I configured in, in the ASA5505. Those interface, like some interfaces inside and some are outside. Outside usually have the public IP address. Then you need to put like peer IP address. Peer IP address, you will get it from downloaded configuration easily. And then pre-shared key, you will find it also from the downloaded configuration. Then tunnel group name comes up automatically. Never change the tunnel, tunnel group name. If you change something else, it will create some problem. Then the IKE policy, you just keep it default. Uh, IKE policy is uh, triple dash SHA and, and uh, define Holman group uh, two. And then IPsec rule, this is the one is important. You need to change to the default configuration to AES to 128 and authentication SHA and then group is again two. And finally, you need to have like I have uh, I have like two local subnet, which is one is my wireless zone and the inside server, and then remote. I had like 192.168.100.0 stroke 24. That was my remote network. Once you have this thing, then you actually start, and then you'll find you can repeat the thing if you have more than one one uh, uh, tunnel IP address or the VPN connections. By default, uh, Amazon uh, VPC uh, VPN connection provides two IP address, so you just follow like two uh, wizard you run, and then you'll find like uh, what I'm showing in here, like your your uh, uh, like side to side name, then interface, then local network, remote network enabled. You'll able to see that in the connection profile, and in the default policy, you'll find the policies if you want to keep even the default policy. Uh, like it's not a problem that uh, Amazon works with the default policy as well. In the tunnel group, you can check it up again. Tunnel group like Fisher keys and 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 uh, group policy if you want to set it up. And then finally, crypto map. Please note this one crypto map map uh, very carefully because you can uh, transform set. You can define one transform set which has like like AES one twenty eight bit encryption and then SHA as a as a method, uh, and then you you must actually see like uh, it it should provide you like uh, the detail that I'm showing in here. If it shows something else, it may not actually work. So on the transform set, uh, the on the editing like tunnel policy crypto map, I actually created transform uh, Amazon, and then there is a peer IP address. Then the second one it was showing this is the default setting, and the third one is showing like the source and destination IP addresses. Once you have all of those things, then transform uh, Amazon, uh, that, that, that group I, uh, I set I created, based on a tunnel, and then ESP encryption, and then ESP authentication. These two are important for the Amazon, uh, Amazon uh, VPN connections. So, and the ACL manager, you need, to, you need to provide like from ACL manager, like source and destination, both, uh, both uh, both uh, the local and the remote 
subnet needs to see each other and then the, the outside should actually allow like our outside IP address to access in and once you have done that then you will find like after a couple of tie if you just ping the remote remote IP addresses if you're routing and uh, VLANs and all of those things all rights you'll find uh, the log and then finally they will be connected you'll be kind of seeing like connection and then you'll see the TX and RX in the under monitoring and VPN the VPN you must select the IP six side to side VPN then you'll be able to see this so once you have uh, have done your side to side VPN from Amazon to your ASA 5505 now you can create some new instances in the EC2 instances on this new VPC to provide the provision of private isolated section in the world in the cloud so the creating of uh, EC2 instances is the is the same just you need to careful about when you select the network you have to select the VPC of what you have created just just a few minutes back so uh, that should be all right if once you select it if you want to provide a public IP address, you can provide a public IP address. And uh, you need to select that uh, like security group. You may find like you might have a lot of security group, but they may not appear in here because these security groups are related with that particular VPC. And once you have EC2 uh, running, so you can ping from your uh, local machines and you can do like remote desktop. And then from the remote desktop, you can also ping back to that that local so in my case I, I ping from my local machines and then I'm, I'm also pinging from my my uh, remote machines to the to the same machine and I'm getting the reply so one uh, if you have like private EC2 instances only connected from the LAN you will notice that for the only private like I have one Windows 2008 uh, instance which doesn't have the public IP address which doesn't have a elastic IP which doesn't have uh, public DNS, only got like a private DNS and then private IP. And then once uh, you have that, and then you can uh, you can run. So I, I can run one one uh, web website that I uh, developed, and uh, it can load locally. Uh, and but the data is hosted uh, locally as well. So this these services can run from both both uh, uh, both of my network. So I, t I even tested like whether I can um, add those remote servers to my local DNS and also to my proxy, uh, proxy servers so that I can allow those, um, uh, those computers to access internet through my in internal network. So I was ab successfully able to uh, add uh, those, uh, that um, uh, Windows machine connected to my local uh, Active Directory network, which is showing like dnet.co.sz, so I was able to successfully able to add mission to the local directory, and then I can access also from the local IP address. So uh, for uh, for this course, we have been accessing using like uh, Amazon Public DNS IP address for any remote desktop, but this particular machine I'm accessing remote desktop from a local IP address and all. Uh, this this uh, um, uh, cloud hosted uh, EC2 instance is accessible, manageable as if like a local uh, local server. In the in my second scenarios where I have like uh, EC2 for leveraging existing infrastructure, so I created one one uh, Windows 2008 server and then I added one extra interface to it and then I added one public DNS and then public IP it got also the local IP so on the public DNS I added one uh, one subnet with the with the, with the IP address and that subnet I attached with that machine so I was able to access that particular machine as a local machine like 192.168.100.163 at the same time, I'm able to access by the Amazon uh, DNS that is created or the public IP addresses. In here, I, I'm loading the data from public internet, internet, and that loads the data from from the the server that is locally hosted. So this can be accessed from a local as well as it can be accessed from internet. So the third example, which is managing shared services, I created uh, created the customer gateway. And uh, I created that uh, particular site A, which is connected to the 
to to my Amazon uh, VPC VPN connection network, and site B is also connected to the same same network. Here is the network that I'm showing after establishing of the network, and I I'm sharing one uh, private EC2 services, and I I I can ping.